can be intentional about your character, you can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is the Dave Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life, your work, and your money. I'm John Deloney, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show and part of the Ramsey Network. I'm here with my good friend and colleague, host of the world-famous Ken Coleman Show, the one and only Mr. Ken Coleman. How are you doing, good man? You actually have to turn your mic on. You actually have to hit that on button, folks, a little behind the scenes <laughs> the there. Big in, right? There's a square right here, and it says on, and when you press it, the mic works. So there you go. But I'm doing well, friend. It's yeah. always good to be with you. We had a blast together not too long ago. Oh, you were looking at that funny video. I was. Yeah, you look great. good in it. We like to share videos together. We all sit in the same room. And, uh, dude, we had a blast last time talking. We talked money. We took money calls. We also took calls about... Your side of the things, relationships, tell them what you do, tell them what I do, and what we're going to take today. So Dave likes to remind people that for, for 25, 30 years, he's talked to people about getting out of debt, about their money, and that money's a symptom usually of bigger challenges in folks' life. The way you handle money is often how you handle other crises in your life. And so I do mental health I've got a history of working in crisis response, working with relationships, helping people make the next right decision when things feel like it's all piling in on top of them. Yeah. And, and you do it well. Well, I appreciate that. And one of the big crossovers that you and I have yeah. is people look in the mirror, they don't like themselves, they struggle in their relationships, they struggle with their money. Mm -hmm. And that carries over into the place where they spend most of their time every day, which is work. That's right. And, uh, you know, the worldview that most people have of work, John, is that I work to live. In other words, I work to get a paycheck so that I can take care of my basics. We talk about the four uh, walls yeah. at Ramsey. And then if we got a little left over, some memories, some vacations, maybe some toys. And the problem with that worldview of work is that work just becomes this utilitarian function that I just say, well, if, if this is what I do, I work to live. And then I start to think that my life is worth my salary. And mm -hmm. if I don't have as many toys or I don't have as big a house or, I, you know, it, 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 it puts the wrong emphasis on work. Right. If work is just about money or right. value, money being monetary value, you and I talk about this. That's exactly right. Well, the Ramsey Solutions worldview of work is that we live to work. Now, some people are going, oh, what? No, 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 no. It's not workaholic. It's yeah. not putting all my value in work. It's not that I live and I don't, I don't value my family. I don't value relationships. It's just all about the climb and I just live to work. Well, no, no, no. It's that let's take the word work and let's switch it out for a second and call it contribute. Hmm. I live to contribute. I was created to contribute. Hmm. Now it's different. Right. Now we find purpose in our work. So where does this come from? You don't have to train a kid, John. You and I both have kids. You don't have to train a kid to say no. You don't have to train a kid how to steal a toy from their friend. There's just certain things that we as humans come into this world hardwired to do. Nobody tells us how to do it. One of the things that we do as humans, we all lay awake at some point in our life and we go, why am I here? Yeah. You and I agree on this. We, th I think purpose in your life is achieved in two major areas. Relationships. That's where you specialize. Right. I was created to play a role in my relationships. Yeah. For me, husband, father, brother, community member, son, teammate, right? Community member in, in, in Williams County, whatever. Right. And then the other side is work, purpose in our work. So when I say that we are created to contribute, that we were created to work, it's that our purpose in our work is about blessing others or contributing to others. So I was created to fill a unique role because I was given talent, things I do well. I was given passion, which means I love to do certain things. You don't have to teach me that. I just figured it out one day. Oh, I love doing this. Hate doing this. And then we all long to create results that matter to us. For some of you are listening today or watching, you want to help single moms. I took a call today on the Ken Coleman show. A lady wants to leave a, a successful career in accounting to work for a nonprofit 
to stop sex trafficking. Hmm. There's a deep why there. Yep. There's a result yeah. that she's looking to put out there. And so that's the beauty of it. So that's the, that's the answer is to figure out, wait a second, what was I created to do? And there's multiple answers, multiple jobs, multiple career paths, multiple dream jobs, if you want to say that. But that's where we all are united. Throw politics, geography, all out the window. What unites us all, at least one thing, is that we all want to make a difference in the world. And so I... So there you go. My default setting, Ken, is to look at... I want to be a doctor. I want to help, I want to help stop you know, sex trafficking. I want to fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. I was going through the attic, putting some Christmas stuff away, and I had that moment that we've all had where you look up and you go, oh my gosh, is that a leak? And then I got a flashlight and looked closer and closer, and sure enough, I got this metal roof that, you know, the, the leaks coming through where all the the little grommets have, have ground away. Call the roofer out. He walks through it with me. Ken, that guy was alive. Yeah, he was. And his whole thing was... I'm going to help. He said, I do roofs in Williamson County, which if you don't know, is where big fancy houses are, right? And I'm even out way out in the country, right? Where the houses aren't so big and so fancy. Listen, he (laughs) took it upon himself to say, hey, there's people out there helping other people get well. We got doctors out here. We've got musicians out here. We've got business owners out here. I'm going to make sure their house stays whole. Their That's families right. stay warm. I'm going to make sure true. they have a roof on their house. That's true. And he felt it, man. He feels alive. Let it me tell you beautiful. why. Let me tell you why. This is so great. We'll break it down. Talent, passion, mission, right? Yeah. Here's what it, that guy, he's really talented at fixing stuff. Yeah. Fixing things. There are some people like you who are talented at fixing people. Uh, or walking with people, or right? Walk, yeah, yeah, you yeah, get yeah. my point. Yeah, I got this you. guy likes working with his hands. He's good at working with his hands. He's good at fixing stuff. He loves solving problems. That's passion. Yeah. What kind of problems do you want to solve? Thing problems. Yep. But in solving thing problems, fixing a hole in the roof, you... I mean, excuse me, he was the most popular person in your house, not you. Right. Your wife loved him more in that moment than she yes. did you. Why? He was really good looking. But also, <laughs> he can actually solve our problem. He solved a massive stress problem for yeah. the Deloney family. And so guys that are working on HVAC systems, plumbing problems at 3 in the morning, your work matters as much as the brain surgeon. But he could walk around this community he with could. his head held low. He could. Because we all we, I am is a right. roofer, right? That's all yeah. I do, and he's tapped into something yeah. bigger. Yeah, he's playing a larger role. That's he's it. a he's a f- he is a cornerstone of our community because yeah. he sees himself that way. Which so is awesome. here's the deal. That's where John and I we're on the same page. So we can take your money questions. We can take your relationship questions. You know, you got your 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 house blowing up. You're having ugly political conversations. Uh, you, you got a boss who is just an absolute nightmare bully. Oh, we love those because we take them yeah. on from a different way. Yep. And, and and so we're gonna take your work questions. If you want to learn how to get promoted, Ken, I want to know how to present better in the office, in my next meeting, my next presentation. Uh, I need help with this problem. Hey, Toxic Ken helped. Ken, you helped me the other day present better when you looked at the way I was dressed and you said, come on, man. It is true. We may discuss that. I did have to help him. Come it was on, uh, it was hard, but he got it. It was all in good fun. You just can't wear those shoes and be a doctor. That was what it boiled <laughs> down to. There's a little tease. And evidently, anyway. we're not pinch rolling our pants anymore, America. Hey, we're Hang coming on to that back. One. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices. And they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to Blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. Show. I'm John Deloney with my good friend Ken Coleman. We are taking your calls on your life, your work, your purpose, 
your relationships, and we'll even take a few money calls, <laughs> and our advice will be worth the price you pay for it. Let's go to Esteban in Orlando, Florida. Esteban, how are we doing? We're doing amazing, guys. How are y'all doing? Very, very good. How can we help, man? Um, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for uh, the work that you guys do. God bless um, all the Ramsey personalities. Uh, you guys have been a great impact in my life. Um, uh, so my question is the following. I'm currently in Baby Step 2. I am basically $2,260 away from jumping into Baby Step 3. Hey, hey, um, boy. Way to go, man. That's awesome. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, I spoke to Ken over a year ago. I work in the service industry right now. Um, however, I've always wanted to do digital illustrations. Um, last year, I landed a contract uh, with a person in another state. Um, I start, I began, uh, what is it, uh, advertising myself, and I've gotten side jobs. Uh, side commissions. Now, uh, because the entry wasn't consistent, I did uh, follow uh, Ken Coleman's uh, advice for you know for setting up an interview and landing a job. And I'm currently heading one to I'm heading to one today. Oh yeah! However, it's nowhere. It's nowhere near my sweet spot. Um, so my question is the following: Okay, should I take the job if it's ever you know offered to me? Um, or should I continue my side job? And the reason why I'm asking that is because given my uh, the fact that I have a full-time and this will be my second uh, job, it wouldn't leave uh, space for doing any more illustrations. And you're, curr- and you're currently making some money here and there, contract uh, work for digital illustrations. Is that correct? Yes, sir. No, I would not take this second job. You've already got a full-time job, and you're $2,200 uh, away from being debt-free. Then you begin to work on Baby Step 3, and that's at uh, that three to six months. Um, I wouldn't take it if you're getting you're still getting jobs doing digital illustration because that is bringing some extra money that's going to help with the whole uh, Baby Step plan. Uh, but if you take that second job, you're going to make more money, obviously, and it's going to fast-forward right. your, your steps. But what would it do to the goal of getting that uh, additional experience you need to put yourself in a position where you get the full-time job doing what it is you want to do, digital illustrations? I'll be completely honest with you, Ken. Uh, I never studied digital illustration, um, and I'm so glad it didn't happen because I was about to sign myself and my mom for a 72 grand back in 2010 for, uh, for exactly. And I'm after knowing you guys and the baby steps and all, I'm so glad that didn't happen. Um, but it does leave me with somewhat of a, of a gap of the knowledge. So basically, I'm just going off of YouTube to learn off of other artists. Um, but the second job, as I was talking to you guys, would be nowhere near, again, my sweet spot. It would just be a home improvement uh, a job. So it would just push me back further away from, from what you currently speak on. Yeah, uh, what Mr. I'm saying is, is it would be one thing if you had to have the money. I would say, yes, press pause on the dream job, Chase. But you don't, you're not in that situation. You're actually making progress. You're on your way. Um, the fact that you self-taught and you're watching stuff on YouTube gets me all excited because it's like <laughs> nobody cares where you went to school. The only question I have, because I'm not as familiar with the digital illustration field, uh, Esteban, is it doesn't it sound like to me that it does require a college degree. It doesn't sound like that, but is it is it favored uh, or, or are you just learning that it might be a little bit harder to gain the actual basic skills? Tell me, Tell me what the answer is there. Well, sir, uh, based on on what I've seen online, on what I've read, articles and whatnot, um, a lot of artists, if I may use the term, are banking um, with not even, you know, the, the degree. So I've even questioned myself. I kind of stopped even thinking about pursuing a degree on that. Good. Yeah. Good adult. That's all I needed to know. <laughs> so excited. Here's why, folks. Let me give this real quick. John, you jump in. But I want everybody to hear this. And this is really for a lot of parents, too. There's this cultural pressure. And you're a big education guy. i got to forget, this guy's a dean next to me, but I'm, I'm going to say this to where John doesn't even disagree. There's a cultural <laughs> pressure that, that has been put on our parents and our kids that you've got to go to college as the rite of passage to success. That's a bunch of hot, stinking garbage. Here's how you determine if college is the right decision. Is it the only way to get qualified? The only way to get a ticket to the ball? 
or is it the best way? Hmm. Now, if it's the only way and the best way, I still want you to do what our pal Anthony O'Neill says and do it the debt-free way. That's exactly right. But in this situation, uh, Esteban is a great example of there's a lot of people that have gone out and got a degree in it and probably learned some really valuable stuff in a classroom. I'm not saying that it's not valuable, nor am I saying it's not helpful. What I'm saying is if you don't need it and you want to go a little bit, uh, take a little bit longer maybe uh, and have to do a lot more, you know, self-taught kind of figuring that out. If you're willing to do that, uh, you can get there. And he's an example. What this boils down to is, do you have the artistic talent? And then can you go get the experience? That's exactly right. I and can't, then you're marketable. I can't imagine somebody sitting down at the Disney Corporation and them saying, man, that's an incredible drawing. Where'd, Where'd you get you your degree from? Or the vice versa. Hey, I went to a fancy pants university. Yeah. I'm not the best drawer, but check out this certificate, right? right. They're, they're not going to care about that. And, Esteban, and if I may. Oh, go ahead. Uh-huh. Go on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I'm wondering, I feel like you called us and you already knew the answer to the call. So why are you, why are you <laughs> taking this other job? You don't want it. It's not going to get you where you want to go. You don't. We could all use extra money, but you don't need the money. Why are you putting well, this on I mean, yourself? Right. Um, so... I'll be really honest, um, ever since COVID uh, hit us, uh, at least my industry, um, it's left me with a very small uh, uh, or a tight budget. Um, if I, I only have like maybe, you know, maybe $200 or, you know, 150 left after all bills are paid, groceries and whatnot. Okay. And I guess I became so infatuated with, I got to get the baby sets done. I got to run for this, got to go for the kill. And whatnot. Gazelle and There that, you go, brother. I got you. Right. Okay. okay. Right. So, all right, so, okay. So that's a little bit more information than I had. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to throw a, a wrinkle to my, my answer. I'm not changing my answer, Esteban, but I would say, if you were going to go get a manual labor job, sounds like it was a, a trade job, kind of a manual labor in the construction industry. Did I hear that right? No, just a home improvement store. Oh, sorry. Oh, great, great, great. So you're going to go work at a home improvement store. Here's what I would do. And if you were planning, how many hours were you planning to work in your mind? Uh, a, par- a part-time. No, I know. But how many? How many hours? Uh, 20 to 25, maybe. Okay. Then I would see if you could get into a place where you can do 15 or 20. And then what I would do is just lose a little bit of sleep. You can do digital illustration at 2 in the morning. Or you could do it at 5 yes, in sir. the morning. So I'm going to do a little combo answer. Yep. Because he doesn't have a lot left in his budget. Yeah. I'm okay with you right. getting that job. You know what you need to do? You can sleep later. Right. <laughs> I take the home improvement job for the extra dough, gets him into his emergency fund faster, Yep. gets him into baby step four faster. When you do start sleeping, you'll sleep deeper. That's right. right. And I would, <laughs> But do not quit the digital illustration journey. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You keep going after those clients. They don't care what time of night or day you're doing it. They right. just want it delivered. Am I right? Yes, sir. All right, that's the answer. Do both, both hand. And, Ken, I get this question a lot because I tell people to take advantage of their mornings to make sure people are reading, right, working on the things that they actually love. Yeah. So all of us have parts of our jobs you got to yeah. grind out. And the most common question I get is, where do you get that time? I don't understand how this works. Yeah, from yourself. I've started doing an inventory of my time. You know what? If you don't take a 30-minute shower and you spend approximately zero minutes scrolling through Instagram – and suddenly, that's 45 minutes to an hour. You just got back. I got to be honest. Right? I'm, I'm a little bit uh, curious about the fact that you referenced a 30-minute shower. Is this is this a normal thing? No, I'm talking about, yeah, it's who a Who takes 30-minute showers? People without kids. Really? Or people with kids who are hiding from their kids. If you don't spend, <laughs> Kelly and James Kelly, are both like, Kelly, are, are you implying that in order to get more time back, you should just skip showering? Cause just do it for three minutes. That That's my normal rhythm is three minutes. My gosh. Try a 30-minute shower, a kid. In there? It's awesome. Yes, see, bring a book in there. See, I James, don't, I don't bubble look, bath. I don't want to look like a human raisin, but you're right. You got to steal time from yourself. Right. Take time from yourself. Get up earlier. Go to bed later. You'll be okay because you got to drive. You got something you're going towards. You can handle a little less sleep for a season. There you go. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981, 
and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org. We absolutely believe in it. I'm John Deloney with my good friend Ken Coleman, and we're taking your calls on life, meaningful work, relationships. What do you do next? Give us a call at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Let's go to Heather in Raleigh, North Carolina. Heather, what's going on? Hey, oh my gosh, I am so grateful to be speaking with you two gentlemen today. Thank you so much for taking my call. We are grateful that you called. How can we help? Okay, so I've got kind of like a a career slash life path question. (laughs) Um, So I've uh, recently in the last six months took a new career path and a step up in my career. And I was able to actually land what I thought was my my dream job while I was on furlough from my previous company um, last summer. Um, It was a voluntary furlough because, you know, I have two small kids and their daycare was closed and and working from home was impossible. So um, I just kind of threw out some LinkedIn feelers and the new company found me on there and um, subsequently gave me a uh, $50,000 raise (laughs) by taking the new position. Yeah. Yeah. So I I went from, you know, making 70K to 120,000 a year. So it was, you know, I couldn't pass it up at is all. That, let me ask you this. Is that <laughs> yeah. why you thought it was your dream job, just the money, or there was actually the, the, the description of the job and, and you looked at it? Yeah, it was said, more the is... description of the job was kind of, you know, that that kind of led me down the, oh, this is awesome. Um, so I, I'm a clinical scientist and clinical research is what I do. Okay. And um, the new position put me in the oncology research realm, which is where I really wanted to be. And but... my previous company, I was, but <laughs> yeah, but it's turning into kind of um, not quite how they sold it to me. <laughs> uh oh. I hear this a lot, yeah, Doc. And it's the old mirage. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, yeah, there's no such thing I as a free $50,000 raise, yeah. right? So what's the big, what's the right. big sticking point? What, what is really causing you to go, I don't want to do this? Uh, well, so I'm trying to help them out a lot more and, um, increase some efficiencies and I'm seeing a lot of, um, data that could be fixed a lot better, but because of the setup I am, I work for one company, I'm contracted to another, you know, it's, I'm kind of running into a wall of, you know, they don't really want me to do as much. And so I'm kind of getting the monotonous tasks versus my previous role where I was really diving in and had a lot more say and was able to make a greater impact. I'm kind of on the back line. Yeah. They've given you the Heisman stance. They're going, thanks, but no thanks. So what's your question for us? Yeah. What's your question for John? Uh, So my question is, um, I, I had a counter offer for my previous role at my previous company. And so I've kind of been in talks with them, but it may be a 20 to $30,000 pay cut to go back to that. Um, well, and I'm hold, currently $150,000 in debt. So well, hold on though. Hold on though. So yeah. when you took your current job, John, help me if I start mixing mm-hmm. this up, my brain is somewhat limited with my ADHD. Agreed. Your current job that you don't like anymore, you thought was your dream job. You got a $50,000 bump. Did I hear that right? Yes. So you were making 70. Then you said they've yes. counter offered and you're going, well, I'm going to take a twenty to $30,000 pay cut. And you're not really at all. You're still twenty to thirty up over what you yeah. were, right? You're going back to where you were and you got a nice bump yeah. from where you were. So basically the way I'd frame that, John, and you tell me this is bad psychology, <laughs> but it's like – it's really not a cut. You're you're escaping what is essentially going to become a professional prison. Right. And you got a nice little yeah. you got a nice little bonus. It was uh, fun for a few to months. To try something. You got a nice bump to try and you're going to tell them deuces I'm out and you come back to where you were and you're still ahead of right. where you used to be. That would be the way I'm looking at it, John. Psychologically, it's going to feel like somebody took something from you. That's right. If you can get past that yeah. and that's where you want to be, but what's the trade-off? For it. So the trade-off, Heather, is I stay where I am, uh, making twenty to thirty more 
then if I go back and I need that extra 20 or 30 because I've got 150 grand in debt, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm miserable. So I guess my thing would be, can you get back to the work you want to do eventually? And can you put up with mm -hmm. this monotony long enough to make it count in your debt-free journey? If you can, I would say I'm fine with you biting the stick. Yep. But, but, but John, I mean, it's real. Yeah. You, you keep going into work every day feeling like you're just moving a pile of rocks from one side to the other. That's torture. That is hard. So what, so what's the real, real here, Heather? Yeah, that's, that's kind of like my hard thing because, you know, I'm like, I don't want this to kind of stop me from the momentum I had at my previous role because they had moved me into manager level. I had direct reports and, and they want you back, you know, it was. Yeah, and they want me back to do that and to advance further towards my eventual plan of being director hey, Heather, level, Heather. whereas here I'm kind of stuck. You know yeah. the answer. <laughs> Heather, you know the answer. I'm going to put you to the heart test. What are you – What are, you called us because you essentially said, I'm thinking this. You haven't come out and said it. Heather, what is your heart telling you to do, not your head? What's your heart telling you to do? To, to go back to my other company. That's right. right. Yeah. Back on. Tell yeah. her what she's won, John. Yeah. Bye, Felicia. Just go, Heather. You got it. Heather, yeah. Heather, that's yeah. what John and I agree you should do. Don't even think twice about it. Here's the deal. You're still making really good money. Mm -hmm. Really good money. And you can get out of this debt. Yeah, thank goodness. And you're going to be on fire because you're not going to be miserable at work. It's not even close. Take it and don't even think twice about it. And you got an opportunity to peek behind the curtain. With some more money in your pocket. Yeah. And realize, that's not what I want to do. Thought it was my dream. It's not. Yeah. You know, it actually becomes a really nice lesson you learn. You got paid handsomely to learn a valuable lesson. <laughs> exactly. You know, a lot of times it looks like this. I got crushed, but I learned a valuable lesson. It's kind of like the, oh, that hurt. Yep. But I learned a valuable lesson. In your case, it's like, woohoo. I, I got money. paid well, and I realized I learned I learned something good. Somebody else found, reminded themselves, or learned exactly they I've got some more right. value, and we're going to be all right. Good for you, man. All right, let's go to Sasha in Cleveland, Ohio. Sasha, what's going on? Hi, Jim. How are you today? I'm living the dream. What's going on? Oh, uh, it's so great to talk to you guys today. Um, so I called you about a year and a half ago, and uh, your inspiring um, words that gave me the opportunity to reach for a job that I honestly didn't think I could get, and I landed the job and All ended right. up doubling my income. Hey, yes. I like that. <laughs> but then 2020 came along, <laughs> and that dream job was taken from me. They laid off half the staff this oh, past year. I'm so sorry about that. Yeah. So, so mm, what's your question? So I've decided to try to um, go into business for myself. Um, so I'm a single mom. I'm now down to barely 25000 a year just working in small contract gigs, you know, customer service jobs. What's the business that you want to – what's the business that you want to go into? Um, recruiting, which is what I was working in. So I was working in recruiting in HR. Oh, so you want to start, um, you want to do it on your own? Yes. Um, I, here's my thing. From what I know of the business, I can earn more doing everything I was already doing. Okay. Well, I'm going into business for myself. Okay. Cause that, that I'm okay with. I will tell you though, while I believe you, my question is what the timeline is going to look like, mm -hmm. because when you start this this recruiting business, you have mm -hmm. to be all in for it to be able to take care of you. But it might have right. a ramp up time that could put you in a really, really tough situation. So my caution to you right. is, and my actual advice is, no, I gave you advice before that you actually took and did something with and went and got a job. Go back and get another job. Get stable again. <laughs> let's let's build up some money and, and, and let's get really stable and then go, okay, there's a season where I'm where I need to be financially and then I'm going to start the recruiting firm and I'm going to start the recruiting firm on the side so that I've got day job money coming in and then i've got the dream job the business whatever it's bringing in i'm not having to live off of it takes the pressure off and you're going to eventually slide right into owning your own business please don't go all in sasha right now as a single mom where you're in tight 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 financial situation it's not the right time Get stable, just like you did before. Repeat, rinse and repeat what I told you before. You did it. You know you can do I, it. I didn't do anything. 
and then we step into it. I love it, Ken. This is The Dave Ramsey Show. my good friend Ken Coleman. Are you trying to find the perfect Valentine's gift? Consider this your friendly reminder, good folks. In order to make real progress with your money, you've gotta be on the same page as your spouse. You need to work together to create a budget and a plan that will help you reach your goals as a team. To help you get on the same page, we've gathered up our best-selling books, budgeting tools, and bundles for couples all in one big sale so you can save up to 83% on the gifts that will help you reach your financial goals. And if you're like me, here we are in February. Man, I may, again, I made some good uh, New Year's resolutions. Oh, yeah? Uh, some identity statements. Here's who I'm going to be this year. How you doing? Good. Okay, good, 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 good. Good. But if you're like me, you can grind out 30 days. February yeah. is the truth teller, oh. right? February is when it's – man, it was hard to get up this morning and get in, get in the gym. You know why? That second and third mile, that first mile when everybody's cheering you on, hey, go, John, It's all adrenaline. And then yeah. you get out there and you the crowd's gone. Yep. The just, cheering's gone and you're in mile two, three, and four. Boy, oh, boy, is it lonely. Whew, who, oh, who are baby. you going to be? So we're putting things on sale up to 83% on the gifts that will help you reach your financial goals. And you don't want to miss – our money and marriage live stream event on February 12th. Early bird tickets are only 20 bucks. That's a $10 movie ticket for each of you, right? Now, don't pass over that. That's you and Rachel That's Cruz. That's me and Rachel Cruz, right? That's fun. It's going to be a blast. You and Stacy, of course, are going to be there. Yeah. You, yeah. you guys need a lot. We need a lot of help. A lot of help. A lot of help. A lot of help. You're going to learn how to have better conversations, create deeper connections. We're going to talk about intimacy, make faster progress with your money. We're going to go there. In fact, Ken, I had to get permission. Can we do this? Oh, you did? And they said. Permission from your wife? No. Well, I did have Mrs. to do Deloney? that. Because I, I, I got a feeling I she did. needed to kind of check your talk. I did sit down with Miss Deloney and say, "Yeah, All right, she's the Mrs. Dr. Deloney. And I said, "Yeah, thinking about talking about this. And she vetoed a few things, rightfully good. so. Good for her. This is good for all of us, but let's be honest. It is. But yeah. we're going to go there, right? Yeah. Um, marriages and relationships are hurting all over the country. So... Uh, February 12th, early bird tickets are 20 bucks right now. Visit us at DaveRamsey.com backslash, backslash store to, to get your live stream tickets and Valentine's Day gifts. Hurry, the sale ends February 14th. If Stacy and I come to this, can you can you pull a f- few strings? A hundred. Uh, I will. I know a guy. I can sit on the front row? I know a guy. Okay. It's a digital event. It's all digital event. Oh, it is. see, glad I brought that up. It's all digital event. Really? You're, you're going to do it from your couch. Watching this. Where are you guys uh, going to be uh, live filming? We're going to be filming all over the studios. It's going to be a multi-layered event. It's going to oh, be a you're blast. you're moving around the building. We're going to be moving around. Lots of fun stuff with me and Rachel Cruz. James, I think what I might do is I uh, slip in the building that night undetected, and uh, I will just show up in random places during the live event. Kind of a where's Ken. I don't say anything, but I'm just kind of standing in the back of the set. 100. We got some tight security, though. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He'll have to show his credentials, but... That's going to be awesome. If you spot Ken, there's going to be some free prizes for you. I think you. we should do that. I'll talk to Dave, see what he uh, thinks. 100% on that. I don't think he's going to like it. He won't. All right, let's go to Dominic in Wilmington, Delaware. What's up, Dominic? How are we doing? Hey, how you doing? All right, man. How can we call. help? I appreciate it. Oh, you got it. All right. So so right now, I am 22 years old. I'm graduating college in May. Um, I am currently in the process for a police department uh, nearby. Excellent. Um, so hopefully I'll be in the academy right when I graduate. Um, I have 11K saved up. Um, I live at home with my parents. I have no bills, no debt. Um, I'll have no debt coming out of college either. Very cool. I'm kind of in this weird spot where I don't know what to, if I should just leave my money in the bank or start putting into a Roth or... I, I just honestly don't know if I should just save up for a house in the next few years, but that's where I am right now. I have two part job, two part time jobs. Um, 
and that basically is 25k a year mm. but i that'll obviously be bumped in the next six months from um if i get hired full-time so. if you were going to get accepted into the to the police academy when would that start it would start in May right after I graduate okay. from college. Yeah, if I'm you, and Ken, jump in here. If I'm you, I would just leave my money in a savings account. I'd leave it alone until I got through. Mm-hmm. Um, usually the way police academies work is they give you a you know, 65 75% of a normal salary until you're out of the academy, at which point yep. then they put you on uh, on the beat, and then they'll move that up to 85 or 95% when you get through a certain time, and that's when you get into the, the, the additional money there. And so I'd just leave it alone. Right, I'd leave it alone okay. and get through the academy. It's hard, and it will it will um, you have a lot of studying, a lot of running, a lot of working to do. Yeah. And then when you get out, you can start making some some different yeah. decisions there. How quickly do you start getting paid with the? Um, as soon as I start the academy, they pay me through the academy. They do. So okay, so that's May. May. But it's a, it's a yep. it's a discounted amount, right? Yes, it would yeah. be. Uh, yeah, I. I mean, 45. Yeah. Your mom, you're, first of all, you're responsible. You're not even, you and the word loser don't even belong in the same universe. Right. I, I think I'd stay with mom and dad too. If they're not, if are they, are they trying to kick you out? No, not at all. I'd stay. Yeah. I, I, I'm all, I'm a fan of that. Yeah, what I'm not a fan of is the kid who's using it as an excuse That's right. to not fly a little bird. And I think yeah. you are beyond that and you're an eagle. You're soaring. Uh, I'd stay with mom and dad to keep those expenses way low and just keep socking away more money. Then once the academy money and everything starts to feel right, you'll know when it's right. Then then I would get out on your own. But right now, man, I'd, I'd hunker down. Yeah, I agree. I appreciate that. You no, good hey, for appreciate, you, man. Listen, I want to say this. Appreciate you, man, that you want to serve the public in this way. And yeah. I know that you're going to be a great public servant in this way. And, and um, I'm proud of you, man. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. That means a lot. Thank you. All right, brother. Good luck, man, and graduate strong. Yeah. Let's go to Axel in San Antonio, Texas. Axel, how are we doing? Good, good. Thank you for taking my call. You got it, man. I'm excited to be able to speak to to you. Axel, I got to ask you really quick. What's your last name? Uh, Betancourt. Oh, such a great name. It's going for Rose here, man, but Betancourt's good. <laughs> Betancourt's good. I love it. By the way, he'll have the best name the entire Dave Ramsey show today. There's no question about it. Axel wins the name award. Oh, man, Axel, so how can we help? Uh, so, just background, I'm 24 right now. I just became debt free last year. I got out of the military when I was 22. I had like 20000 in debt. Nice. I, I started doing Uber Eats and working my job and just working even on holidays. I would dress up like at and a call on Christmas to get those tips. So Look finally, at you, man. I love go, it. Brother. As, so finally at 24, as of today, I have I have saved for emergency fund, $14,000. I opened my Roth. I'm matching my job, TSP. But now I just don't know what to do from there. You know, like, I have the emergency fund, but I don't like it. Like, for example, last month, you only gave me like $5. You know, I don't know if I should do something to that or just keep on there, you know? Yeah, man. So your emergency fund is not a wealth building tool for you. Okay. So don't, it, it, you don't want to look at it and say, Hey man, how much, how much interest are we earning on this thing? Uh, it's just, it's just sitting there. That's the point. The point is to be there when you need it, not to ride any sort of roller yeah. coaster. Yeah, interest rates are so low, you're never going to make, even when they're higher than they are now, you're not, as John said, you're not going to get a bunch of money on this. Look, you walked Dave Ramsey's baby steps out. You are. You have. You're there, man. So if you've got your three to six months, let's say right now that 14 represents three months. If you want to keep juicing that and get it to six, great. That's, that's not a bad thing. But if you feel like three months is enough uh, and you've already started the Roth and it's the 15%, uh, towards re- towards retirement. And then if you feel like you got extra beyond that, go sit down with a smart vest or pro. All right. Go to DaveRamsey.com and go meet with somebody in San Antonio. We've got a bunch of them down there. And go, hey, uh, in my, in my, for, my, uh, for my situation, as young as I am, I'm financially in a really great place. What do I do with this extra money or what do I do here? And just, just keep playing it out. You are in fantastic, yeah. fantastic shape. My young man here, Dressing up as Santa Claus for I'm some extra you, money. He's like, doing what it takes. Yes. That's like next level gazelle intense. All right, Axel, I'm going to tell you something, and this is hard to hear. You ready? Uh oh. Yeah. You have been, as Dave would say, gazelle intense. You've been sprinting. You saw a problem, and you have done everything you can to get rid of that problem. And now you're going to face something that most people never reconcile with. 
that the way to building wealth is not overly complicated, but it can be boring. So you're there, you've got this emergency fund. Now you're in baby step four, five, and six. Now you just got to lock it in and just keep taking step after step after step. Nothing sexy, nothing crazy, no fireworks. Just keep taking the next step and you're going to get there. All right, I'd like to thank you for joining us. This hour's in the books, Ken. Fun stuff. This has been the Dave Ramsey Show. intentional about your character you can have money and a career you are the hero in your story live from the headquarters of ramsey solutions broadcasting from the dollar car rental studio this is the dave ramsey show where america hangs out to have a conversation about your life your work your relationships and your money Sitting in for Dave, I am Dr. John Deloney, joined here with my good friend and colleague, Ken Coleman, the host of the world-famous Ken Coleman Show. How are you doing, good man? If I was any better, I think I'd have to uh, check around the corner. Out. I don't even know yeah. what that means, but it sounds good. Yeah, I'd be a little nervous as well. Ah, I see what you're saying. Things are good. Things are good. And you know, my general p- position on that question is, is, you know what, it's fine. But if it wasn't, you wouldn't want to hear it anyway. Nobody really wants an answer to that. How you doing, Ken? Terrible. Well, I've got a you know got a boil <laughs> in the middle of my back. Gross. <laughs> like really? Yeah. No, we don't want to hear that. Just lie to me. Yeah. That's right. Which which begs the question: Should we ask a different question? Yeah, we we are not good. You don't really want. You're Mr. Relationship Guru. We don't really want someone to tell us how they're doing. See, my problem is I kind of do. On your show, you do, but not when you're walking into church. Hey, how you doing? Well, let me tell you. Terrible. That's right. that's right. So maybe we can just say, "I hope you're doing well, man. It's good to see you." That's the what. That's the response. Hey, good to see you, Herb. It's good. Good to see you, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said Herb. I, you know what? I will answer it about anything. No, I knew you're not herb. I'm saying I was. It was like a. It was like a general. No, I like a herb. I like a good herb. You like that? I do. I, I think, like yeah, it. Yeah. We have a herb here. We do have a herb. Mm-hmm. He's a smart guy here. It really is. Well, we're taking your calls on life and relationships, money, purpose, work, all of it. Anything that's going on in your heart and mind, give us a call. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. That's triple eight eight two five five two two five. Let's go to Cynthia in Rochester, New York. Cynthia, good afternoon. How are we doing? Hi, good. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Thanks for calling in. How can we help? Um, so a little bit of background story, right? The phrase of question. I'm 32. Um, I graduated college in 2010, and I recently decided to take a break from my six-year relationship with my boyfriend because it was kind of getting to the point of get married or don't. Um, I come with a significant amount of savings and assets, and it's kind of always been the elephant in the room in our relationship, and I just want to learn how to get over the fear and the, I guess, insecurity that I have of not being used or taken advantage of because of my assets, even though our salaries are pretty similar, like the take-home pay every month. But it's just like I own my own condo and um, I have investments and 10 years worth of retirement funds. So it's just helping me, you know, come to terms with that and like letting it be okay and knowing that um, I'm protecting myself. So... What about this person after six years? Are you still questioning? Um, like the way you posed that, other... the way you posed that, Cynthia was, man, here we are six years later, and he wants to get married. And I was <laughs> like, the way you said that, it sounded like three months, not six years. Right. 
And you're worried. um, You also said, I'm really worried about being taken advantage of. Is he giving you any reason to feel like you couldn't trust him? Yes and no. And we're supposed to talk um, in two days. And I just want to come prepared. And I want to come with thoughtful answers and questions. And, um, you know, like every relationship, we had ups and downs and pressures from parents. And his parents were always, you know, open arms. They they really uh, loved me, and my parents were more taken to stance. Well, of course, look what they're getting. Well, look what he's getting. So, Cynthia, um, so how how, kind of how direct can I be with you? Very. <laughs> this relationship will never work if you think you're superior to him, especially mm. if you think you're superior to him because of assets, because of things you have in your bank account. I think one of the great mm. cultural curses of the modern world is that we have distilled down the question, what are you worth to a financial number? And we look at, like we say, hey, what are you worth, man? That's a number. The answer to the question, what are you worth, is never a number. And so if you're sitting across a table at a nice restaurant, if you're sitting on the couch next to somebody you have known and loved and walked alongside the ups and downs of six years, and you think, I'm still better than you. I still have more mm. money than you. Then, honey, don't do this to him. Don't. Yeah. If you were going to yeah. enter this relationship and say, we are all in and we're going to co-create a future together. I'm bringing this. He's bringing that. We're going to create this together. Awesome. Yeah. Cynthia, I asked you earlier if he had done something to make you feel like you could not trust him. You said yes and no. I want to, I mean, you don't have to bear all the details here, but you got to address the yes part. Whatever he has done that has make, made you lose trust in him has got to be addressed between the two of you. And if not uh, just between the two, you also with a counselor, right, John? I mean, what is it? can't leave that. How is it? Well, I, I think it's coming from mom and dad, but what has he done that makes you not trust him? Um, there was an episode where he... Uh, hooked with drugs, so that was a big red flag for me. So that's um, not a, that's not an asset thing. That's a hey, I'm that's a poor yeah, judge. No, he, I don't want to be married needs, to someone he, who he lacks, right. And I, I think I was using the money as an excuse, honestly. And my there dad said the same thing. He yeah, goes, what does he that says, mean? Sweetheart, you know, you yeah. know, you know, money. You know, you can marry a homeless man down the street. It shouldn't matter. If he treats you well and he makes you feel, you know, at peace and calm. There you go, Cynthia. Okay. You know, on top on top of financial security, I wasn't getting that emotional security. There you go. So, 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 can I can I be direct with you you again? Cynthia, can I be direct again? Sure. You've got permission to walk away. Yeah. You're worth somebody who's going to love you, and somebody that's going to share values with you. And that's going to keep you safe and keep you connected and treat you like you're a valuable, special, extraordinary human being, regardless yeah. of your finances. And so yeah. it, it's um, you have permission to walk away. And you're going to feel like I put six years into this thing. You, you're 32 now. You think back to what when you were 26, you just met and you were in love and this guy's funny and cool and all that. And now you look up and you're 32. You're not married. You're making your way, and you want to be connected, and you are now coming to the honest truth that this isn't the guy. You've got permission to walk yeah. away. Cynthia, you just gave yourself the truth that I think you yeah. called us for, and that was you said I was using the money stuff as an excuse. The reality is he wasn't giving you the emotional security that you long for, that you deserve, and also this drug thing wasn't an episode either. We don't need to break that down, but there's a lot of trust issues here, um, and I, I – I, uh, yeah, you, you don't need to feel guilty at all. You you need to feel cherished. You need to feel challenged. wanted, yep. challenged. This is a partnership. Marriage is no joke. Um, you yeah. guys can have a talk, but I would have walk away power. He needs to know that you mean business. And that's not financial related. It's yeah. not judgment related. No. It's I'm worth this. That's right. Good for you, Cynthia. I know that's a hard conversation after six years. Go into it boldly, humbly, be honest. You don't need excuses. Tell the truth. You deserve to be loved. This is The Dave Ramsey Show.
folks, it's an honor to tell you about the Army National Guard. Not only are they big supporters of our high school curriculum, but they also give you the opportunity to impact your local communities. Whether your goals are to get an education, serve your country, or have a better life, the Army National Guard can help get you there. Plus, they offer unbelievable financial benefits. Secure your future today. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. I'm John Deloney, joined by my good friend and Ramsey personality, Ken Coleman. We're taking your calls on life and work and relationships and money, everything. Anything that's going on in your heart and mind, give us a shout. 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Let's go to Michael in Woodbridge, Virginia. Michael, what's going on, brother? How can we help? Hey, Ken, how you doing? Uh, I'm living the dream. How can we help? Yeah. Oh, I'm living the dream, too. Oh, that's good. (laughs) Well, hey, I want to thank you and everybody on Dave Ramsey's team for what you guys teach and the stuff you guys offer. You guys do a great job of that. I'm a huge fan. Uh, I am working through the baby steps. I have baby step one all done. We're on baby step two. We're almost to the halfway point of baby step two. Good. And we're just chucking away debt. Good. Um. I just had a life situation uh, come up that's kind of a big change for me. I've been living with my parents for quite some time now, and this past December, I ended up getting a uh, an apartment from somebody that I go to church with, and um, the only issue that I've just been having is I've already signed the lease. I've made the security deposit on it, but I've only paid like a small portion of the uh, – uh, rent, and I haven't been able to pay anymore because I haven't been able to live, and my mom and dad think it's a waste of money if I just pay rent and I'm not living in the place. So just kind of wanted to get your guys' guidance as to am I being ripped off or should I just you know be patient and have them make sure everything's ready for the apartment. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot here. I, yeah. I kind of back up a second. When you, I want to start with you said I've I've paid some of the security deposit. Some of the rent, mm-hmm. but uh, I haven't paid any more because I haven't been able to live. I, I I got stuck there. What does that mean? What's your financial situation right now? So my financial situation is the next bill. There's one other bill that I'm adding on to my budget, which is uh, rent. And where I'll be renting is it includes everything in utilities except internet. I've already got a separate payment for that, but I've already paid the security deposit. I've already signed a a rental agreement Mm -hmm. um, for the lease, but um, I haven't been able to fully move in yet. Why? Because there's still, because there, there was something with the water line that was going on that they didn't expect to have happen. And so they're trying to fix that and everything. If you sign um, the lease for a place to live and they're not giving you a place to live, they're in breach of the lease. Yeah. And so either they find you a new place or they mm-hmm. let you out of the lease or they reduce the amount that you owe them on this lease. Yeah. But it's it's super, okay. super simple. Yeah. And I, you walk straight into the office and say, I need a place to live on the agreed date at the agreed price, and you said this place. There's a water issue, so where am I going to live? Yeah, you need now? to know. You need to know what this water line. You don't even know what it is. That would freak me out. Whoa, 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 what do you mean you got a water line problem? I'm right. going to need like a four page report with a, <laughs> you know, with a with a PowerPoint presentation. I I just think you call them up and go, hey, let's. Uh, I think John gave you great advice. If if that's what you're asking, I mean, I would not move fully into this thing right now. Um, I. Yeah, I, and that's what I'm trying to do is like be patient with them, trying to get this fixed out, and then trying to work something out with the rent. I just want to make sure, just get your guys' advice to make sure I'm not getting ripped off or not. Well, if you've given them a security deposit for a place that they said you were going to live in on a certain date, and a place isn't ready, then yes, you're getting ripped off. <laughs> now, okay. be a person of respect and dignity. Don't be a jerk. 
and walk in and knock, not saying that you will, but it's easy to get self-righteous and indignant in these kind of moments. People are usually doing the best they can with the tools they got. Do this in person. Tell somebody you want to meet with them and say, hey, look, we signed this lease. Um, and I was ready to move. And I know that you, like you said, you're a friend from church. You're helping me out. But I need to know if we're going to move or not. And I need to get my deposit back if we're not going to be moving because i got to find a place to live ASAP. And hopefully they'll find another apartment for you or they'll let you know. Like They'll have the 17-page uh, report due that Ken needs <laughs> and um, for the water issue. And then they'll get you squared away. Yeah. But don't avoid a conversation. Don't get your heart rate up if you've never talked to the person. And um, just go straight in and solve this problem directly. Yeah, I think there's a time to be patient. I think now's the time to be persistent. Yep. Then once we get all the answers, then we can be patient. But I don't have enough details right now for me to be patient. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, especially if I've already put my money on the line there, right? Yeah, no. All right, let's go to Jessica in Cincinnati, Ohio. Jessica, what's going on? Hi, thanks so much for having me. Um, I have kind of a complicated uh, question and, like, life direction question, and I think you guys can help me with. But, All right, bring it um, on. So, <laughs> so I'm a nurse um, by trade. I've been a nurse about 17 years, and about four years ago, I decided to go optional and um, to be a stay-at-home mom. And, of course, with the pandemic, there's been opportunity for me to kind of, like, contractually, like, get back in and be at the bedside again. And I'm making really awesome money, uh, which is such a huge blessing because my husband and I have been, like, Dave-esque for a while. So we're really – we got a bigger shovel to get out of our debt. So, And, actually, today we're paying off our second car. So hey, that. congratulations. But, That's um, awesome. Yeah, yeah, it feels so good. So the thing about it is, is – um I can still like continue on for like who knows how long, right? In this um, this bedside nursing where we're making lots of money because of the pandemic, which is awesome. But it's actually not really like my passion anymore. Mm-hmm. I have a totally different like direction that I've been kind of like side hustling in the culinary world, and I love that. So I don't know. Um, trying to figure out like what to do with my life uh, when I grow up, even mm-hmm. though I'm 38. Um, just do I keep pursuing like the culinary stuff or should I stick with this, you know, this nursing for a little bit longer and get a little bit, keep that big shovel. Um, I, I'm just not really sure I'm praying about it. And I just, I really just need some, some divine I love direction it. as well. As All right. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> yeah. This yes, is a, you I'm said ready. this, you said this was a complicated question. And it's really, it it's not. <laughs> Super I got, not. I got, okay. I got two okay. simple answers. You ready? I want you to write this down because this is so simple. I'm ready. I have pen and paper. I'm Great. ready. <laughs> the answer is yes and <laughs> yes. You keep, okay. you stay with the bedside nursing because of the huge shovel that it is providing for you. You add all right. that to this aggressive get debt-free plan that you and your hubs are on, right? You just keep crushing it. Okay. Momentum. You've already started this culinary pursuit on the side anyway. So it's not like you don't yeah. have the time. You can do it. Keep doing the culinary thing. Keep testing it. Keep getting better at it. Scale it a little bit. Or if you have to, just hold steady. And then when okay. you get that emergency fund paid off, you know, and, okay. you, and then I think that's when you go, all right, let's reassess. Do I now okay. walk away from nursing? But I think this is a really easy decision because I think it takes the pressure off of the dream. This oh, wow. great, okay. think about this. You are pursuing this dream, this culinary side hustle, and you're doing it in a non-pressure filled environment. You're not relying on it to pay off debt. Mm-hmm. You're not relying on it to pay the bills. Mm-hmm. It's gravy right now. Am I right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. So here's the deal. Fun. The, it's a yeah. lot of fun. Oh, that's the word. That's the magic. <laughs> here's why. Here's why. Oh, this is so exciting. Listen, most entrepreneurs start a business and they put all their eggs in the basket and it creates all kinds of stress. It makes them uh, lose their patience. And right now you're in a place where you can persist and be patient and you got a great day job and you and the hubs are rocking you're paying off debt (laughs) we're seeing the dream and you're going to get to a point in the very near future where this day job is going to actually possibly fund an expansion of the dream job (laughs) so i think you will be the one to determine when you leave the bedside nursing but right now do both you already have been yes and yes I wish that I had some wisdom on top of that, but I think that's awesome. 
we know, John, sometimes I just really nail it. And that was that time. I, that was about as <laughs> that was that was just about as good of an answer as she could have possibly hoped for. You were the guy that yes dropped and yes. off somebody you were dating, and as you were about to drive off, you rolled the window down and said, "That was an amazing date." Just we all need to acknowledge that was an amazing date. And I love that about you, Ken Coleman. <laughs> this is the Dave Ramsey Show. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices. And they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to Blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. Blinds.com's 100% satisfaction guarantee means even if you mismeasure or pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Rules and restrictions apply. John, today's question comes from Daniel in California. He writes, I've worked at my current job for almost five years since the end of my second year. My manager has been teasing me with a promotion by saying, promotion pending on my annual reviews. I sent him an email late last year asking what I needed to do before I would be eligible for a promotion. And all he said was, I would be eligible January 2021. January is come and gone and still no word. What is the best and most respectful way to go about asking for a promotion? Well, uh, normally, John, what I would tell folks is don't ask for a promotion, don't ask for a pay raise, ask for a growth plan Mm. where you sit down with your leader and you say, hey, I want more. Yep. And I know more means I want to get better. Mm -hmm. I want to be more valuable to the organization. So uh, what are some areas that you you see that I could improve? What are some additional skills or training that you think that if I got that makes me uh, uh, a better, uh, a little bit more valuable in the current role? Or, or ready for others. And then, um, what does a growth plan look like in the organization? If we measure my work, um, do we have a key results area like we do at, at Ramsey Solutions where we all have a one-page document that says, this is a win for John Deloney, this is a win for Ken Coleman, this is what I need to do, uh, it's what I'm expected to do, and here's the results. We need to create that with a leader. That's the growth plan. And when we do that, it becomes a very natural progression into if I grow my responsibility and my influence, then my income comes with that. So I want to grow professionally and I want to grow financially. It doesn't put the leader um, on a defensive tilt yep. as, as when you go and say, I want to talk about a raise. But based on this question, folks, um, this has already been talked about. This guy's been writing promotion pending on. I kind of don't like that. I that, don't either. That irritates me. That's a me. punt, man. That's Switzerland, dude. You got to well, make a call. It's also kind of a mean little carrot to dangle out in front of somebody. Just because we're adults doesn't mean we aren't still that little kid that says, do I matter? Right. Do you see me? That's what workers long to know. That's what we all long to know. So in this situation, because he said January 2021 and no word, I'm having a meeting with him, scheduling a meeting. Hey. Yep. Here's the history of what we've discussed. I want to be here. Yep. I want to be more valuable. I want to grow. I want to do all the things. I've got dreams. And listen, if 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 this isn't where you see that being possible, just let me know. Yeah. I'm down with it. But we've talked about it and talked about it, talked about it. What does that look like for me to be able to get the promotion? Can we put a plan together? Because here's what's happened. When you talk promotion with a leader who isn't ready to deliver on it, it's easy for them to punt. Yep. They kick the can down there and go, oh, we'll talk about it later. No, 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 no. There's no talking about it. What we say now is, can we sit together, schedule a meeting? Can we do it right now? If not right now, can we schedule a meeting in the next week mm-hmm. to actually put on paper a growth plan that would allow me to not just get promoted, but also to begin to make more money? If the answer gets kicked down the road then, then you know what it's time for? 
Adios, out. There you go. I'm looking somewhere else, and I never give advice to just jump off a cliff. Get something else. The minute you got the contract or you got the signed deal on something else, then you walk in and say, it's been great. I'm out. So tell me if you hear this on your show a lot, Ken. Um, in the past – I've experienced this. I've been guilty of this. Um, and I've led big teams that have experienced this. A, pr- a promotion or a raise should be reflective of this journey of work, right? Mm-hmm. What is your, your value to this company? We need you. We want to recognize you. We want to increase your scope here. But we've turned promotion into a destination. Mm-hmm. And what I see people with their mental health is if I can just get to be associate director, my life's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. If I can go from 50 to 57,000, man, my problems are gone. Mm-hmm. And it never works that way. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know if you hear this on your show. I love the way you twisted that because you're asking somebody what really is important, which is how do I get more outstanding at this work? How do I help our downstream customer, which is the only thing that matters here, mm-hmm. right? How do I help them even more? And on the way, you're going to get promoted. The money's going to take care of itself because you become such an asset. But the, the focus is on the work and not this imaginary, not true destination that's supposed to heal you, right? So glad you said that. So you said destination, and I had a thought that I'm going to get to in a second. I got to write it down so I don't forget it. Okay. So I'm a fan of meritocracy. Okay. So is Dave. Oh, we're getting political. Yes. No. See, he thinks that's political. Oh, it's not political. All right. Meritocracy just simply means this is merit based. Mm. That's what that's what a workplace should be. Merit based, meaning I am delivering results and I'm delivering good results and I'm continuing to deliver great results. And as I add value to the organization, then they should in return reward me. Well, that's not near as fun as I was thinking. I agree with you. Yep. Okay. So uh, here's my point, though. A lot of people, not only, I thought it was a great point you made, that a lot of people think that the promotion is the destination. Oh, I'm going to be better. I'm going to feel better about myself and all that. We know that's hollow. You're not. However, a lot of people, I'm going to step on some toes right now, so everybody get ready. And a lot of young people, and this is a function of age, so don't pick on millennials and mosaics here. You were like this too, you Xers and boomers, so shut up. But we think that a promotion, it's become an expectation. I've been here 18 months. Been here a year. Where's my meeting? Where's the meeting? I've been here a year. That's right. Uh, I've only been late three times. Uh, yes. I have not punched a coworker. Um, I have done everything you asked me to do. It's time for a raise. Th- let me tell you something. This no, is, that's it's, 100%. This is absolutely right. I hear this all the call all the time. I get these calls from young people. Hey, Ken, listen, um, I need to ask you a question about asking for a raise. I get this call every week mm-hmm. on the Ken Coleman Show. And I say, okay, well, well, tell me tell me what's your background. Well, I've been there a year. Oh, okay. <laughs> Instead of, I'm I've, crushing it. I've developed such a rapport I'm, yeah. <laughs> with these customers. They keep coming back. They want to yeah. know how my kids are doing. They yeah. want... I want to know how their families do it, right? I'm yeah. adding value. Yeah. It's so, time. Right? I wanted to unpack that other side of it. it. And John's right. Don't make your promotion this destination. And also don't allow it to become an expectation. Right. Here's the point. This is a meritocracy, folks. It just is. Work is a meritocracy. And sometimes it's a really crappy one. Yep. That's why people leave companies. They don't leave companies. They leave leaders. Yeah. And if a leader won't recognize an individual, because we all long to be seen. Yes. This is a core human need. Do you see me? Do you notice me? And we want to add value, not just to the company, but we want to see our work make a difference in the lives of others. That's why I call it meaningful work. That's what we all long for. So in this situation, if you've got to put your leader who may be really kind of not good at this, Mm -hmm. At Ramsey Solutions, everybody's got that KRI, so we know what is expected of us. We know how we're measuring results against the expectations. Those are two key things that are very different, folks. And and so if leaders don't do that for you, you got to sit down with them and don't put them on tilt and on defense and go, hey, I've been here about a year. I'd like to talk about a raise. Uh, they're not even ready for that. Right. So what do they do? Kick the can down the road. We'll talk about it. And they're going, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Yeah, this guy, why, I think why, that's why, what's going on in that question. And so you've got to sit down with them and go, hey, I just, I want to be here. I want to grow. Let them see your human side. Because everybody has that same feeling. I want to grow, but I want to add value first. Tell me where I can get better. 
Tell I me want to get like so at. good at this. Yes. How do I help this customer? Yes. How do I help their family? Yeah. How do I yeah. help like the roofer that is helping? Yeah. How do I help protect this guy? Talk about even value, better. Talk about how you can grow value you want to provide, and after you do that, then you can go. And I'd like to measure that because what you're saying is I want to be accountable. Yep. How are we going to measure me? Because I believe in me, and I believe if we measure me, we're going to see the results. And so I'm saying, when we measure me, what's the compensation tied to the output? But let's start with value. Yes. Let's start and, with excellence. And here's the real genius behind this idea. If you bring your leader in that way and they're semi-healthy or healthy, they're going to jump on that. And now they've got input. They feel like it's their idea. Of course. And leaders, if you've got somebody in your organization that is adding value, call them in today yep. and look them in the eye and say, you're adding value. Thank you. We're going to figure out how to help you out too. Don't let that be one-sided. We're telling the kids to stop with the, hey, I've been here four months with my raise. You, leaders across the country got to step up too and By recognize way, John, value. Don't just pull them into your office and tell them. Tell them in front of their coworkers. Yeah. That's even better. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. I'm John Deloney with my good friend Ken Coleman. We are taking your calls on life and work and money. Give us a shout at 888-825-5225. Let's go to Adam in Cincinnati. Adam, how are we doing, man? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing, guys? Very, very good. How can we help? So um, my wife and I recently finished paying off all of our consumer debt except for our mortgage. And at the end of this month, we're going to have our three months of uh, emergency fund. Very cool, nice. man. Way to go. Thank you. How's that feel? So I thought, um, that's kind of what I'm calling. So I thought at this point I would feel more of a sense of accomplishment, but I almost feel like I've checked one box and I'm, I'm on to the next box of trying to pay off the mortgage early. Is that kind of normal? Does it take you some time to kind of re-equilibrate? I don't even know if that's a word. Re-equilibrate a little bit and just you know, be able to enjoy the accomplishment that you've had after being that in that gazelle mindset for a while. I'm just curious, uh, John. I don't, John, let to John tackle that. The psychologist here, but I'm just curious. Did you all celebrate in any way? Uh, no, we haven't. Not, 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 not even like a nice dinner to say, man, we just paid off our debt. No, we haven't. Oh. Yeah, you've, so, really, you, Adam, you got a kind of been. Yeah, our Adam, life's kind of been crazy, so. It's been an up and down. Describe that for me, because I think there's something else here. So, when you say my life's been crazy, what else do you mean? So, like about a year after we started the process, I left teaching and went back to school um, at night while also working. Got an in, got an engineering degree. So for like four years, I was busting, you know, 90 hours a week between work and school. My wife was working 50 to 60 hours a week. We had our first kid about two weeks after I started going back to school. And then a couple of years ago, I got my promotion once I started my career in engineering. My wife left her job, so we took like a $25,000 pay cut. Mm-hmm. About three weeks after we moved, we found out we were unexpectedly pregnant with our second child. Um, then I got a promotion last year, another promotion last year in July. My wife started working part-time again, so we're back to making almost 100000 a year. And it's just been, life's just been crazy. Yeah, it's been a high-speed really, roller coaster. We haven't really taken time to focus yeah. on ourselves. We've just been trying to, you know, keep our heads, yep. you know, above water and just trying to make sure we had a... You All know, right, Adam, Adam you just said it, brother. So, i got to ask a question on behalf of Adam. Love it. So, Adam, you've given us... i got to ask John. Is he in a situation... I don't know what you call this, yeah. but is he in a situation where he's been biting the stick so long, his jaw's locked, and he doesn't know how to just let off that stick? Well, you can... Here's the thing. You can 
be in survival mode for so long yeah. that you start creating new environments for yourself that uh, you've got to survive. That's a better way of saying it. And then, the, then you start to get to the end of that tunnel, and then we are going in to survive something else, right? Yeah. And Adam, here's what's going to happen. And you know this, so I'm just saying it for everybody listening because you're not the only person who's experienced this. You're one of the few people with the courage enough to call it out. You're going to look up, brother, and you're going to be 35 or 40, and your kids are going to be in their late teens, and you're going to have run from one thing to another thing to another thing to another thing. You're going to look across the kitchen table. You're not going to really know your wife. Your kids are going to be staring at their phones. They're not going to want to talk to you. And you're going to realize, I spent all of my life in gazelle intensity, and I missed it. And so here's the thing. You know, you just said it here, and you know what the deal is. The deal is, man, you have had a crazy time the last couple of years. Going back to school, changing life direction, changing purpose. Uh, um, your wife is going running and gunning. Oh, and you bring a kid in. And so that's just a hurricane blizzard that just hit your house. And then, whoa, surprise, we got another one on the way. <laughs> We're right? not sleeping. Here we go. Yeah, no sleep. <laughs> no, it's all chaos. Yeah. Here's what I want you to do, Adam. Will you do me a favor? Yeah. You got a pen? You're an engineer. Do. You don't even need a pen. All right, here we go. Ready? Number one. This weekend, you're going to take your wife on a date. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care if you can't find child care. Figure it out, okay? Your kids are one and three. They'll, they'll, they'll be fine. I'm just kidding. Don't do that, right? So you're going to take your wife on a date, and I want her to get dressed up. I want you to get dressed up. I want you to start the date by opening her car door, and I want you to reimagine re-falling in love with your wife starting this weekend. And you're going to date her again. And you're going to start there because that is the most important relationship in your life. And this weekend is going to be about celebrating this extraordinary accomplishment of becoming debt-free except for your mortgage. You're going to have an awesome time dreaming together about what life will be like when you pay the mortgage off. You're yeah, going to I was going to say that. Start that dream conversation at that nice dinner. That's right. Start that dream. And by the way, buy her something nice. Not just, not just, don't you just iron your shirt, dude, and put on some khakis, whatever dress up is. Yep. Buy her something nice. Do something great. You, you can afford it, bro. You're the engineer. This isn't going to make sense in any yeah. of your dumb little spreadsheets. I'm giving you permission. This weekend, you re-fall in love with your wife intentionally yeah. and on purpose, okay? And then you're going to talk about what, how, are we, how are we taking care of our kids? What's yes. the trajectory of our kids? What kind of house do we want to have? You're going to relearn how to breathe. And then you're going to write down together what are ways we're going to insert into our lives on a regular thing. we got to practice this, and they don't tell you this in marriage therapy, and they should. Shame on them. you got to practice intimacy. you got to practice being connected. you got to practice remaining in love. And I tell you what, Ken, Titanic lied to us. The Notebook lied to us. Romeo and Juliet lied to us. What? We Wait. just walk into a room, and we're like, there she is. And I don't have any more work to do. We're just going to be in love. We're going to have... Two kids, seven kids, change jobs, get laid off, have have a have a pandemic or two, have a chaotic election cycle where I didn't know you believe that. I believe that all that's gonna be okay because we see each other and we're in love. And that's not how it works. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been told that there is external solutions to internal holes, right? There is, and I and, and you. And just, it's a lie. It's a lie, and you just gave some beautiful advice. I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna add that um, one of the things that irritates me about our world that we live in is this performance based, because everybody's looking at us, and and it irritates me when I see these football coaches or basketball coaches they win a national championship and and you know oh the next day the next day we started for next season and I always go this is just so stupid yep. Why don't you go on a freaking cruise and celebrate the fact that you worked your butt off, you fought for everything you had to win? And this is what's going on here. Adam worked his butt off. He and his wife fought and clawed to get debt free. Now they want to pay the house off. Well, great. There's a reason why Dave, by the way, put the pay the house off at the end of the baby All steps. Right. That's right. It's six. Yeah. There's a reason. It's hard. And it takes a while. It does. And so we, we cannot live all the time in this fight, claw, scratch. It's just, it's not who we are. And so when you do what this couple has done, folks, celebrate it. Now, that doesn't mean you go crazy, but celebrate it. And not just celebrate it with stuff. Celebrate it emotionally. Mark the moment. Yeah. 
I love the idea of going to dinner or maybe go on a walk and sit there, maybe sit by a lake. Yep. And just hold hands and throw rocks in there and go, wow, do you remember when we did this? Remember when we ate mac and cheese for seven straight days or whatever? Or here's and mark 10, the moment. It's a mile marker. As we've been sprinting for the last two years, here's 10 things I've yes. discovered I love about you yes. that you don't even know. Here they are. That's me. You know why? Because any man or woman who's ever accomplished anything significant, and by the way, when you folks who listen and watch the show, you've gotten debt free or you're close, you've done something significant. You're doing something significant. This has nothing to do with notoriety and fame and power. Right. I'm saying anything that is a significant accomplishment. You talk to anybody after the fact, there's a euphoric state at first, kind of like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we did it, we did it. You know, it's kind of like, is this really happening? And then you realize something. You're the same person you were before the accomplishment. There's the letdown, right? Well, it might be. It's not so much a letdown. It'd be a it's, neutralizing. It's that it's like, wait a second, I'm still the same guy. I'll tell a story on that maybe maybe some other time on the show together. But here's the point. It's that when we get there, we realize, wait a second, it was about the journey to That's this moment it. that made it euphoric. It wasn't about the status that I'm debt-free. It's that what I did and who we became on the journey. It's the journey, not the destination. So, Adam, we're proud of you. Good job. You be proud of you. Yes. Love your wife. Let her love you. Celebrate. Love those two little kids. And re-fall in love together this weekend. We're excited for you, brother. This is The Dave Ramsey Show. intentional about your character you can have money and a career you are the hero in your story live from the headquarters of ramsey solutions broadcasting from the dollar car rental studio this is the dave ramsey show where america hangs out to have a conversation about your life your work your purpose and your money Sitting in for Dave, I'm Dr. John Deloney, joined here with my good friend and fellow Ramsey personality, Ken Coleman. We are taking your calls on anything, anything going on in your heart, in your mind, in your home, in your relationships, at work, in the mirror. Give us a call, 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Let's go to Lisa in Charlotte, North Carolina. Lisa, what's going on? How can we help? Hi, good afternoon. Hope you guys are well. And also with you. I am call- yeah, I am calling today to um, just get some insight from you, Dr. Delaney, on um, your thoughts of the current, I hate to say trend, but I question if it's a trend of prevalence to label teenagers with anxiety, Oof. specifically girls. So um, do you have a have particular a story? Who- yeah, there you go. So what's going on yeah, in your we've home? Got, we've got a, yeah, we've got a senior girl okay. who had um, basically disappointment and sadness when they did not go back to school in the fall. And, you know, you acknowledge it. And, I mean, how can you not? Mm-hmm. Um, but has developed into the point where she asked for counseling. So, okay, you go. And the counselors are very eager to label anxiety. Mm-hmm. And my husband and I, we, you know, we question, is it, is it disappointment? Is it situational stress? Is it things that we view more as life moments? It's just life, yeah. Versus mental health label kind of thing. And it's interesting, talking with other moms, the prevalence associated, whether it's stereotyping or are we not teaching our kids life moment. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted some insight on it and, and you know, how you, how you view that. Yeah. Lisa, you, um, man, you you just made in one call, you pushed 
most every button I have, and I'm a pretty laid back <laughs> guy, and you pushed them all, so I'm gonna just put it all out there. Can well, I am too. You, you and hop in at any point. Putting me over. I'm in a referee. I'll throw a flag if it gets out of hand. So here's right. the thing. A couple of different things. And I'm saying this. I've worked with thousands of high school and college kids over the last almost two decades, 16, 17 years. I don't even know how long. Um, we have a culture that is over-pathologized discomfort. We are quick to label anything. Like you mentioned, you said it perfectly, any life situation. So I'll give you an example. I can't tell you how many kids, freshmen, sophomore in college, would come into my office heartbroken, weeping, real, true, deep pain. It's real. It hurts. And they'd say, hey, I'm depressed. I've got anxiety. And I'd say, what's going on? And they'd say, well, my dad just moved out. My parents are getting divorced. My granddad died. And often I would say, thank you for sharing that. I don't want you to walk around saying you're depressed. You're sad, and you're supposed to be sad because your parents are getting divorced because you lost a a dear grandparent. And so we are obsessed with putting a label on discomfort as though it's something we can um, anesthetize ourselves to, that we have somehow figured out this perfect pain-free life. It doesn't exist. It's not real. So I'm 100% with you on that. I think we overlabel kids. I think kids who have been stuck at home and realized, oh my gosh, I'm not going back to school. I can't see my friends. I'm not going to get real human interaction. Absolutely. It's devastating. And we need to sit with yeah, them absolutely. and not, um, not brush it off. Oh, shake it off in my day. That's not helpful, right? Let, let that, right, those feelings right. be real. And a year into sitting at home when right. our kids haven't seen anybody – Those anxiety alarms get louder and louder, right? Because these kids are disconnected. They're trying to learn in an environment. If you look at Maslow's hierarchy, they're they're not safe. They're not connected. We've got parents who are fighting and yelling in the home, or they are trying to figure out how to navigate their own work situations and financial situations, all that. So the anxiety alarms are real. And then on top of all that, we've got a culture that says that the insurance companies drive these counseling sessions and say, if there's not a diagnostic, we're not helping you pay for this. So counselors, I, my heart is for them, with them too. They are forced into a situation. This is psychologists and counselors and marriage and family therapists, social workers, everybody, that they don't get paid unless they give you a label. Have a label. Right? right. So everybody's hemmed in on this thing. And then there's a fourth complexity, which is sometimes it's helpful to name the dragon. Sometimes there is some peace looking at a kid saying, hey, you're not broken. Your body's doing exactly what it's supposed to do when you find yourself alone and scared and frustrated and angry. It sounds the alarms. And that's what anxiety is. There is a time and a place for a quote unquote anxiety diagnosis. I am real, real slow to do that. Real slow to do that. Every good counselor that I know is real slow to do that and is real open to talking through, especially in your situation where you've got a minor, that you should be involved in those conversations too. I am terrified of 20 years from now what it's going to look like with all these young people who have these medical charts, much of it digitized with these mental health diagnostics when they try to go get a job, when they try to get health insurance, when they try to get um, life insurance, when they try to get f- military, so fill in the blank, right? So I'm with you. Um, what I will tell you is this. Even with an anxiety diagnosis as a mom or a dad, unless I get some very clear guidance from a therapist that says, your kid's got some severe pathology, your kid is really struggling and it needs some Um, intervention that's more than a regular counselor can offer, um, I'm going to handle it the same way. I'm going to be over-intentional about connecting with my kid. I'm going to be over-intentional about um, listening, walking alongside. Um, People laugh and I get email after email about, I thought you were crazy and this super works. Um, Putting my hands on on their hands, on their face, looking them in the eye and making sure they know that I love them figuring out ways that I can, they can be around people their own age. If we've got to do outside events, depending on where we live, um, or we have to do them safely, whatever that looks like, but going out of our ways to curate connection with these kids because their anxiety alarms are real. Uh, but I don't think it's a forever label that needs to be attached to them. Right. Like a, like a tattoo. Right. Ken, what do you think? 
Uh, I think that what you said is absolutely right. And I, and I think that um, just like anything, if you go to a doctor, many times you'll get a second opinion. Yep. And I think that parents need to feel okay sometimes trusting their guts. You know, we know from a lot of research that when somebody trusts their gut, it's actually their head as well. Just some good old common sense. And as a parent, I've got three teens. There are times where I've had to sit with it for a little bit. Yep. And I go, wait a second, if I remove my emotions and I use my common sense, um, I'm going to give my kid a second opinion. I'm going to love on him. And I'll just mention this because this is how we roll at the Coleman House. I found that the biggest breakthroughs come when we pray and we pray without ceasing. We just pray and we pray and we pray and we don't stop praying. Uh, I think that's the wonder drug. Well, I, I appreciate your heart, Lisa. Your kid's not a wimp. Your kid's not a yeah. weakling. She's going to be fine. And your kid's not broken forever either. Get her connected and stay connected. Cliff and I joined Christian Healthcare Ministries because we really like the concept of uh, Christians sharing each other's burdens. And we really experienced that firsthand when Cliff was diagnosed with heart disease. It was just such a relief to know that financial burden was going to be taken care of. CHM is the original and longest serving health cost sharing ministry. Get started today and check us out at chministries.org. money to save and spend how you want. It doesn't have to be that way. And I'm talking to you. Yes, you who's just vacuuming and you got your headphones in right now, or you're driving across the country in a, in a long haul truck, or you're just scrolling through YouTube. I'm talking to you. It doesn't have to be that way. You have to believe that you can get rid of this debt and take control of your money because you can. And it's not going to take as long as you think. I've got so much in debt. I'm so much in debt. I know. And we've talked to millions of people. With Ramsey Plus, we'll kick, off, we'll kick you off with 90 days of guided help so you can put more of your money back in your bank account. You'll learn practical ways to get small, consistent wins that add up to big results and better habits. And that means you'll get where you want to be faster, debt-free and spending your money, get this, without worry. Another way to say that is with peace. Hmm. This year, you can make more progress on your debt and saving than you ever have. Get Ramsey Plus and start living the life you want faster. To start Ramsey Plus, get this, for free, text TRIAL to 33789. That's trial, T-R-I-A-L, to 33789. All right, let's go to Chris in Dayton, Ohio. Chris, what's up? How are we doing? Hello? Hey, Chris. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing outstanding, brother. How can we help? Uh, got a quick, uh, just some advice questions. So, um, I, uh, 33, uh, got a wife and three kids, and we... Bought my parents' farm uh, last January, okay. and uh, it's an operating small uh, fruit and vegetable farm, about 20 acres here. Um, I've been transitioning. We rented the farm from them for a few years, and we finally bought it. Um, I've been transitioning from working a uh, regular job uh, as a diesel mechanic to being self-employed for probably about three years now. And, uh, last year I went full time on the farm and this fall I've been doing like remodeling stuff. So my question is, um, I'm trying to figure out if, uh, like, uh, I'm trying to figure out. So it, my dad sold me the property for 350,000. Okay. Uh, it's probably worth about 450. 
to 500 probably. Okay. So he gave you a pretty good um, deal on it? Right. So I had some equity in the property. Okay. But I feel like I'm working my butt off just to try and stay afloat here. So I'm trying to find out if I should try and get a land contract also. When you say so stay afloat, anything, yeah. when you say stay afloat, you're running the farm and the money the farm is making isn't covering your bills? Uh, it does during the summertime, but I have to do something in the fall, which is fine. I don't have a problem doing that. But okay. And this is like my passion. And the only reason that I bought it is because I got a really good deal on it. And my dad was going to sell the farm, mm-hmm. which I grew up on. So um, I didn't want it to be gone, you know. So let me ask you this. I have this chance again. Let, yeah. let me ask you this. Um, huh? During the summer when it's paying the bills, does it also throw off enough profit to – to pay the bills for the whole year on the farm? Or are you having to do this remodeling to help pay the bills during the off season? No, the farm pays for its own operating costs and pays us during the summer months. That's fantastic. Um, I don't, now let me so ask you this. When I do the remodeling, none of my remodeling money goes to the farm. Great. It only goes to paying our bills. Great. And uh, does that include you paying down the mortgage on it? Yes. So you called us for a reason. I'm not quite sure mm-hmm. what. What are you having doubts about? You sound like you're really thinking through this. Hit me. What, what do you What do you want us to to speak to? Um, so, I'm just trying to uh, find out like what would you do in my situation? Like, um, I'm working really hard. Should I just and so here's the thing. So, we've kind of done the Dave Ramsey stuff on and off. We never really stuck with it. Okay. So, I guess my question is, do I just stay with this farm and really stick to the budget and all the baby steps and make this happen? Or do I try and get out of this and get a job? I can get a good paying job and get a small house and like save money really fast. So Chris, did you buy this thing because it tugged at your heartstrings because you had fond memories of this place? And now that you're you're doing it full time, you're looking at, Mm -hmm. Hey, I got 30 more years of this and I just don't like it. It's not what I want to be doing. Have you had a moment no, of clarity love, and honesty with yourself? No, he loves it. He said it was his passion. You love this. Yeah, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Well, how much sure. debt? Let's do a real quick analysis. How much debt do you yeah. have besides the home? Besides got, the farm? Don't don't give me the okay, farm. So I have, have twenty thousand uh, dollars credit card and unsecured loan debt. That's it. That's it. Twenty thousand. Yeah. And uh, you said you're off and on, so you understand, and you have at times had momentum. You've been working the baby steps. You know what to do on the debt snowball, correct? Right. Um, and you've got the farm is throwing off money to be able to pay you and pay its mortgage uh, and all the expenses. I, I don't see it being a millstone. I don't see this being a problem. I think during the off season you're getting with it. You've already been working real hard as a farmer. I don't know anybody works harder than a farmer. No. So and- I'd be getting after it right now, maybe a second remodeling job, maybe a better paying job in the off season, crush the 20000 and then go all in on the farm. Unless I'm missing something, I think you'll regret selling the farm. Okay. And I also, I also don't know, again, I, I coming from a farming community, I don't know many farmers – and I, I'd be way wrong. I don't know many farmers personally that do not also have something that they're doing yeah. in the off season. Right. Yeah. That, I have no problem doing that. I mean, is that land worth a lot, whether it's a farm or not? Um, as farm ground, it's, it's worth a decent amount in our area. Yeah. About 10,000 an acre. Okay. Because what I'm saying, what I'm yeah. thinking through is, is what happens if that particular, you know, because farming has been hit hard, pretty, you know, pretty hard by some of the economic policies, you know, yes, of recent but times. We're kind of like in a, we're, we're kind of a little bit different because we're more of a specialty farm. We grow vegetables and we pretty much sell to the local economy. Which so. is perfect. That's awesome. So, see, we're that was my thing. That's perfect. Row crops at all. See, that's great. And so you know more about it than I do. And that's what I was trying to get at. Is this a risky uh, or a very stable type farming uh, product that you are putting out? And the answer is it's stable. So I think you bust it really hard in the off season and pay that 20 grand off. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, uh, you could still keep side hustling it for right. a while. 
you know, and uh, get that emergency fund where it needs to be. Uh, put that extra on the farm. I'd try to find ways to make more money on that farm and pay that three fifty off. I think that's your goal. I think you're. I think you get gazelle intense, man. I don't think you sell the farm. I think you get gazelle intense okay. and realize that this is my dream, and I can make this dream more stable if I actually go all in on Dave Ramsey's baby steps. Make sense? Yeah. So yeah. hey, so hey Chris, are you answering my question pretty much? Chris, you're married. Yeah. When's the last time you and your wife went on a date? Uh, a couple weeks ago. All right. So here's, boy. here's what I'm going to do. Um, we love farmers, and I love giving away other people's things. So if you will commit <laughs> to going all in, all in on following the baby steps, starting from start to finish, you're in a, in a rare place where your family had a farm that was able to pass through to you. You got a great deal on it. You love the work. It's hard every day, hot and cold and dusty and dirty work, but you love it. I'm going to give you Ramsey Plus for a year. Hey, hey. And you're going to sit down and watch that with your wife. You're all going to go through it together. And I'm going to give you a ticket to date night, Mar- Money and Marriage live stream, February 12th. So that's next Friday, 7 p.m., me and Rachel Cruz. We're going to be um, – it's, it's, it's an all-in date night. You and your wife are just going to sit on the couch, turn on the TV, and it's going to be romance. We're going to make you all have to have some hard conversations, teach you guys how to dream together about money. And then I want you just to let the shackles go. We can hear it in your voice, man. Be certain you're going to be in this together. And then grow this awesome farm and then pay it off so you can hand it off to your One kids. One day they're going to come here and do their debt-free scream and bring us some fresh fruit. That's what they're going to do. That would be Huh? Awesome. You like where my head's at. I love that. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Folks, it's an honor to tell you about the Army National Guard. Not only are they big supporters of our high school curriculum, but they also give you the opportunity to impact your local communities. Whether your goals are to get an education, serve your country, or have a better life, the Army National Guard can help get you there. Plus, they offer unbelievable financial benefits. Secure your future today. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. Show. I'm John Deloney with my good friend Ken Coleman. Give us a shout at 888-825-5225. 888-825-5225. Let's go to Lindsay in Woodbridge, Virginia. Lindsay, how are we doing? I'm good. Thank you for taking my call today. You bet. Thanks for giving us a shout. What's going on? So I have a question about baby step two and whether or not I need to put money aside for a possible divorce. So I've been married for eight years. I have several young children. I am the um, working mom, and then my husband is a stay-at-home dad. Okay. Great dad, really good dad, um, and we are really great roommates. We're okay. best friends. We do everything together. But from the day we got married, I knew there was something wrong. Okay. Um, I initially thought there was something wrong with me because we had no intimacy, no you know, cuddling, just that there was something wrong. Mm-hmm. I found out during my last pregnant just a couple years ago that he cross-dresses and he has been in a relationship with at least one other man prior to getting married to me. Nothing after getting married to me that I know of. Okay. Um, I can't be attracted to someone who is actively cross-dressing and he is not interested in anything without it. Okay. And so while we are really good roommates, I am very, very lonely, yes. very lonely. Yep. And some days I just don't think I can do it. Mm. But other than that, we are a really, you know, we're good friends. Our kids are happy. I don't think our kids have any clue that we have any relationship problems. And so with us being in the middle of baby step two, we've paid off about 200000 We have just under 200000 to go. Are you a doctor? 
Yes, I am. Okay, there you go. I was going to say, man, that's a lot of student that's loans, a, that's right? a great guess. I was uh, <laughs> yes, but we're, we're almost done. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, should I stop it and put money aside for a possible divorce? Or if I am content enough, should I just keep going and keep working on the baby steps and just ignore that aspect. We have tried counseling. He's not interested in any changes. He's not okay. interested in following up in counseling. So where does that put you? When you say possible divorce, he's not interested in any counseling. You've already expressed your emotion and where you're at. So what's where are you at when you say possible divorce? While I'm content most of the time, I am so lonely sometimes. I don't know how long I can stay married to someone Lindsay, what kind, of, Lindsay what, what kind of doctor are you? I'm primary care. Okay. So I can, I'm going to speak to you like a fellow geek for a second. Is that okay? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the, the JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association. You know mm-hmm. the diseases of despair data, don't you? Yes. We are amidst a loneliness epidemic that is killing us through all sorts of chaotic inflammatory responses, right? Whether it is Mm -hmm. addiction or whether it is people taking their own lives or whether it is what what the articles are calling long tail suicide through organ disease failure, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm just speaking geek to you for a second as a way to to soften the blow here, but you can't live a life Mm -hmm. of loneliness. Yeah. Just because he's a great father, just because y'all are great roommates, doesn't mean that you've got to stay married and you've got to stay lonely, right? Part of um, part of a marriage is two people working together to co-create a future, and I don't care what the other like the the. The fact that he has been with other people, the fact that he has a way of um, showing his authenticity to himself, to his core group of people, and you have said, I don't want to be a part of that moving forward, and he has said, well, tough luck, then I don't want to be the one to tell you this, Lindsay, but you called the show. He has said, my authenticity in this moment is more important than being married to you. Yeah, that's a really nice way of saying that. I'm going to jump in and say he's made it very clear he doesn't want to be married to you. He doesn't want to fix it. This is a whole different deal. Or he wants to be married on his terms, right? I can't. Mm -hmm. I just don't. That's not being married. So there is a relationship contract. It's not a legal document. Me, I think married is... We are married. together. That's right. That's right. No, it's not just in the same house. Uh, this guy may be a fantastic, fantastic roommate, but you're going to crash. You're going to crash hard. You have crashed, haven't you? Might have. Uh, you have. I, yeah. I was admitted for depression a couple of years ago, but I've gotten to the point where I recognize it wasn't my failing in the marriage. I gave it everything I had. Sure. Yeah. So. And so what's left? What are you waiting on? It's hard to do it looking at my kids. Yep. It is. Yeah, that's 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 true. Uh, well, let's talk about the financial piece, John, here, because you've got 200000 left. So, yeah, we want you to pause because you're in the midst of a really big storm. And so you need to pause paying off the, the debt snowball until we until we figure out the when, the how. Yeah. What's that going to look like? I mean, it's just too uncertain. So right. we want to pause. Right. That's the financial piece. The financial piece is... Um, yes, you got to pause the baby steps and because you have a, as in, to use your words, because y'all are still best friends, because you've got a good relationship, you can sit down and have this, uh, it's going to be a very hard, very challenging, but a factual conversation. Here's where we are at. And I'm not willing to continue to be lonely inside my own home anymore. And you've made it clear that you're not interested in co-creating a future together with me. And so, as Ken said, as I said, he, he, your, your husband's painting the picture for you, right? And now, not by your hand, but in your lap, now you're forced to make some hard decisions. And here's where we are. And I don't know that you're going to find two people more high on marriage than Ken and I. Um, I'm not in the business of telling people in their marriage. But I am in the business of telling the truth. And the reality is, Lindsay, you've told me your marriage is over. And that it is, at this point, it's drowning you. Yeah. 
And I'm not going to sit by and watch a friend be drowned, right? So yeah, as far as the money goes, hard conversation. You got to pause the baby steps. Y'all going to have to... Um, uh, make some hard decisions about how you're going to move forward together, how you're going to work out the parenting. All that stuff's going to have to happen together. This is not going to be an easy road moving forward. I hope everybody can act like an adult and y'all can work together in this transition. And I always, always, always am going to circle back to my hope for um, reconciliation, for people to come together. Um, but you've been doing that for a long time. And so it's time to call what it is what it is and make the hard, hard decisions together and then continue to honor each other around your kids. Don't ever, ever, ever be in the bad mouthing game. Either of you honor each other in front of your kids. And this is going to be a hard, hard season to walk. Um, and I want to thank you for honoring us with your trust here. I know this is a hard call to make and, um, we'll be thinking about you moving forward. Yeah. And I would just say this, that, you know, you've done some great things in, in paying off $200,000 worth of debt. You're going through some extremely, extremely painful stuff personally, pressing pause. Don't feel guilty for that for a second. Work, you work through all this that John said, and then there's going to be a season where you'll be able to pick back up and you'll right. get there. And uh, hopefully it's whole uh, in, a, in, a, in a healthy relationship where you're not alone. So and I want to call don't us, second guess it. Let's, let's um, and Ken, it's, I think it's important to <laughs> not let people off the hook here. It's easy to hear a call like this and go, oh. <gasps> I don't know anybody who dresses in women's clothes or who feels this way or is attracted to people. I get this call all the time, Ken, about video games and about alcohol and about spending money and about have to have another car and a house this size where you get somebody who's married and the person they're married to says, I'm doing my life this way without you. That's right. That's exactly right. Without you. Yeah, that's right. They're really the details and the sensational, whatever you think is sensational, whether you don't think it's sensational or not. The fact of the matter is, is when one of the spouses says, I'm not interested in counseling, which means I'm not interested in reconciliation. I'm not interested in And you. they've been unfaithful. Then, you know. It's not by your hand, but in your lap. And you've got some hard so decisions. So you've been to forced to deal with it. And so you don't quit living. You keep moving. I hate that for her. I really do. And the kids. Stay in there, Lindsay. Stay in there. This is The Dave Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day is 1 John 3.20. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and He knows everything. Rosa Parks says, stand for something or you will fall for anything. Today's mighty oak is yesterday's nut that held its ground. That's a great quote. All right, let's go to Kurt in Columbus, Ohio. Kurt, how are we doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? Outstanding, brother. How, how can we help? Um, so I'm fairly new to the whole Dave Ramsey program, trying to figure out the best way to attack uh, my debt. Um, I am currently engaged. Uh, me and my fiance are going to get married in June. Um, and so I have roughly about 8000 in a car loan that I'm working on paying off. Uh, hopefully, without getting crazy with that, I should be able to pay that off in like a year and a half. Um, she's going to have about 40000 in student loans. Um, I know I have about 18000 in investments that I've been thinking about selling off to pay off the car. I know she has about ten in her savings account. Uh, my question was, should I hold on to selling what I have in the stock market um, to wait to pay off her student loans because we have six months of interest free with those? Or should I go ahead and sell to pay off, pay off the car loan faster and then we'll be paying on the student loans for, uh, I'm figuring for about eight months to a year 
after after we get married. What's do you have single stocks in the stock market, or are you talking about cashing out a retirement plan? Uh, no, that's separate from what I have in my retirement. That would, that would just be non-retirement investments. Like what? Uh, it's just uh, uh, S and P. Uh, 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 I don't know. It's the, the stock SPY. It's just a, a mutual fund tracker. So, how much is it worth if you cashed in today? What are we talking about? That stock? Uh, it's just over. If I sold everything, it'd be just over eighteen thousand. Yeah, but you're going to take a hit. Are you going to take a no? No hit on that. Okay, so he's going to get that. So, I, I, how much is the car worth? Uh, the car I owe, like I said, I owe about eight on it. But the car, if I would sell it, I could sell it for about fifteen. Hey, I like that better. Yes, uh, I like that better. Um, but you could sell the single stocks. Yeah, I'm, I'm selling every single stock I got, and I'm gonna pay off stuff if you can get money for your car and get into a cheaper car. But yeah, sell your single stocks today and get out. And pay your debt off smallest to largest. Don't overcomplicate this system. You're somebody that loves the adventure and the risk and coming up with a scheme, aren't you? <laughs> um, That's not maybe, a bad maybe thing. a little bit. Hey, brother, I'm the same way, dude. Like, I can't tell you when me and my wife were going through this, I had, hey, hey, listen, honey, I figured out a new way to sideways this deal and to go around the loop-de-loops and do somersault. Here's the thing, man. Put your debts in order, smallest to largest. Get a $1,000 emergency fund, which is going to freak you out. Cash out your single stocks and pay this stuff off. Yeah, so let's run through these numbers, okay? So you said that you can sell the single stocks and get eighteen grand, correct? Yeah. All right, so the cars, you got 8,000 debt, so that's going to leave you 10 left over. You're going to put the $1,000 mm-hmm. into the emergency fund, so that gives you nine grand, right? Right. Okay, and the car's paid off, and 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 you know the fee, I'd I'd save the nine, and when when we actually walk down the aisle, I'd put the nine, put the nine on there for. Her. And do you have that's going to knock it down to thirty one for her student loans, and then you guys attack that remaining thirty one thousand with a vengeance. You guys are going to pay that off quick. You had a payoff date of about eight nine months, I thought you said correct for the forty thousand. Uh yes, yeah. yeah she has she has about ten in saving in her own savings, and I've talked to her, and she's getting on board. Done. Um, oh, hello. Plans. So now we um, so but, so now we take her ten because you've got the one thousand yep. that John had you put away, and so now I've got that at about twenty one thousand if I did my math right. And then you got two yeah, incomes. So, so you, Y'all are going to crush this. You're not going to do anything dumb like go buy a eight bedroom house your first two weeks of being married. You're going to go be smart. You're going <laughs> to use bedroom house. You're going to use both incomes. You're going to knock this out in yeah. ASAP. Yeah. And then you're going to be able to breathe. And then you're going to be able to enjoy your marriage debt free with yeah. no strings, that's, no chains, no nothing. That's how you do it. All right. Yeah, man. Now it's twenty one thousand. After you make all those moves, you're only going to have twenty one thousand to attack together. That's great. Or you can do this, Kurt. And you can hang on to that stock, and in six months it's going to drop in half, and then you're going to be calling us back, going, "Hey, how do I uh, figure this one out too?" Right? <laughs> hey, you know what to do. You're a smart guy. Put all your creative energy in wooing and falling deeper in love with your wife. Yeah. Follow the plan that yep. millions have followed, step yep. by step by step. And by I step. want to point something out because I misunderstood for a second, but it's like I heard the retirement never, ever, ever cash out retirement. No. Never, ever, ever, ever cash out 401k or retirement funds to pay off debt. Okay, that's where you take the tax right. hit and you end up not doing it. So that so I just want to be clear because we have a lot of new listeners that's come right. in there. Uh, you don't touch that. But the stocks, yes, that's a good move. If you're Great playing move, single actually. stocks, sell them. Yeah, that's risky that. as it is. Most people lose their yeah. shirt on that deal. Yeah. So yes. there you go. All right, let's take one more quick call to Luke in Meridian, Idaho. Luke, are you anywhere near Pocatello? Uh, about three hours away. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Hey, hey, hold up. Listen, we had a good friend here from Pocatello that called. His name is Nick Fowers. He sent us some Pocatello High School We need gear. to give quick context if, yes. and then get to the call. We had Nick on, what, a week ago when yep. we were on together? And we love the name Pocatello so much we got excited about it because we both have ADHD. And, and I said, is there a Pocatello High School? He said, yes. I said, I'd love some memorabilia. I was totally goofing off. Nick sent you a t-shirt and sent me this hoodie. So he there you go. He hooked us up. So shout out to Nick. Uh, for the free hoodie. That's right. So, Luke, <laughs> that's not why you called. I just got excited because you're near Pocatello, my <laughs> third or fourth favorite city in the country now. But you can uh, save Meridian here. How can we help? Um, yeah, so I'm just looking for uh, for some advice on some opportunities that uh, opened up. Um, 
So basically, uh, I had a internship over in the UK that opened up recently um, that I got into um, about something that I'm like pretty passionate about. Okay. Um, but I also have applications currently into uh, West Point and the Naval Academy. Whoa. Um, and so basically, I would leave in April. And then um, if I got into the academies, I'd come back in June. So I was just wondering if I should take that um, or just like stay home and enjoy my time before I make a pretty big commitment to West Point or the Naval Academy. Well, you applied for this. home for like eight years. Yeah, but Luke, you applied for this internship because you wanted to do it and you thought it might be good for you. Yes or no? Yeah. It's in the UK. That's pretty cool too. Great experience. Yes or no? Yeah. I think you do it. I, you haven't given me one good reason why you shouldn't do it other than you're going to be going away. And I understand that. So it's like, if you're worried about friends and family, and if that's your heart tugging at you, I think you listen to that too. What's really making you doubt the decision to take this internship and go to the UK? Um, the financial part of it, I guess, is part of it. Um, I have the money to do it. It's just going to come to my savings because I have about 15000 saved right now. Does it put um, you on the path? Does this internship, is it going to help you in the future? Uh, yes. Kind of. Okay. Uh-huh. I mean, here's the deal. If, if, if you've got the money for it and it is a good experience for you and it actually is something that will add value to your long-term goals, I'd do it. But if it's just a pure fun thing, and you, then you've got to weigh it. You've got to weigh it. What would you rather have at the end of this time? The experience and less money or... More money and no experience. I think that's what it boils down to, unless I'm missing something. So what are you leaning towards right now? Um, I'm leaning more towards just doing it for at least two months and then uh, going to West Point or the Naval Academy. I just come home a little bit earlier than I normally would. Do it. John, what do you think? For sure, man. Yeah. Great experience. You're going to miss out on like, all right, bros, let's all go. Or an awesome opportunity. Right? Okay. I think one of the greatest, greatest experiences that any human being can have is to see the world, to go to other cultures. Blew my mind the first time I got out of America and I got to see large parts of the world. And I was like, ooh, I'm really small. Not in Kansas anymore, Toto. That's exactly right. I'd like to thank James Childs and Kelly Daniel for putting on another great show. Thank you so much for being with us, America. Ken, appreciate you. Always fun. This has been the Dave Ramsey Show.